Welcome back to the Make Up You podcast. In this episode of What is Fertility Reiki series, we're discovering and explaining is what is Reiki womb healing? And this is different than just what is Reiki. We just, we did that in part one. And we have a series of questions that we pulled our audience and we're going to go ahead and dive deep. So before we do that, I want you to make sure you're leaving a five-star rating and review and following us on Apple Podcasts and making sure you're downloading every single episode so you don't miss out. And also, if you have comments or questions about the contents of these episodes, I want to know. Send me a voice note on Instagram, the Carolina Sotomayor, and I'll be sure to answer you today. So the first question is, what is Reiki womb healing? Essentially, the womb is your energetic space where you birth everything from. And that is your pelvis. That is your sacral plexus chakra. We take Reiki, which is the life force energy and energy healing, and apply it to the womb and make sure that particular area of your body is pain-free, flowing with energy so your chakra is open and flowing to the rest of the chakras and making sure that you feel whole. You feel safe to exist in the world, experience your emotions, and feel connected to your body. Reiki womb healing is essentially Reiki applied to your womb and allowing you to release all the traumas that are keeping you and blocking you from your goals. Those goals might be a baby. It might be breastfeeding. It might be postpartum. It might be working through toddler tantrums. It might be starting a business. But womb healing should be done by every person, by every woman, so that you can be living your most authentic life. And I know you probably hear that all the time. But womb healing is so important because it removes all the emotional traumas that are holding us back, that are keeping us disconnected from our higher self, that are disconnecting us from seeing new perspectives, that are um, preventing us from ending generational trauma or not allowing us to see what version of us our babies need us to become. Our wombs are our portals to the spiritual realm, to our creation, to our higher selves, to our soul. And like I said in part one, we birth everything in our lives. So why don't you want to birth everything that you are putting and creating into the life from your highest possible frequency right now? And we do that by healing our wombs. And that's layered. It's not a one-time thing. Healing in general is not a one-time event. So Reiki womb healing allows us to become our most feminine, our most divine feminine aligned form of ourselves. So with womb healing, it's not just some ambiguous thing that you can't tangibly put into words. In some ways, yes, but other ways, no. Some women become so healed that they feel like empowered that they want to quit their jobs and become stay-at-home moms, or they switch career fields and they go back to school and get a different degree, or they start a different business, or they decide, nope, I'm done having children. And maybe, you know, they, or maybe they want a third or a second and they were unsure but then become sure in the decisions that they make. And womb healing allows that to be done. You become with more healing that you do and the more healing that you allow to occur, it connects you better to your gut, to your intuition, to your higher self. It allows you to be more of you. And what happens is discernment. And discernment happens when you are making the judgment call, but you're feeling it and you're also embodying it. And that decision just kind of integrates to all parts of you. So you feel when you make a decision. Oh, this feels right. This is the right choice. Or that feels completely off. That's a no for me. You will discern and you will feel What is the right decision for you when you are making decisions? 
in that place and the decisions that you make from a healed place will be very much different than from an unhealed place. And you will start up, you will start living without fear and you will stop making decisions with fear or lack. So fear and lack dominate a lot of how a person can navigate life if they're unhealed or if they're not looking from all sides of the situation. I haven't always been able to say that I have been able to lend myself or have capacity or the mindset or wherewithal to lend myself to see other people's attitudes, mindsets, positions in situations or conflicts I've been in. But now I can. I can say, oh, I can see their point of view. I can empathize with how they are feeling. And then I can decide how to move forward. I also, with Reiki womb healing, I can live with both my masculine and my feminine energy. And what does that mean? Masculine energy can lend ourselves to burnout and to lead to do too much and to overcompensate for people when they don't show up for us and they don't give when they're supposed to or they don't give back. And they're, you know, there's energy vampires or energy leaks. Um, whereas now I can wait or I can say no and I can set healthy boundaries and I can spot a person before I allow them too far in or like, no, no, thank you. It's okay. And I'm, I can sit and have a person unhappy with me before I was such a people pleaser and I couldn't stand it if someone was upset with me and I had to fix it. That's inner child trauma that I had to fix it and that I couldn't stand to have someone upset with me. That's not my problem. I made a decision. I made a great decision because I am great at decision making and because I decided that because I, I, I cleared womb trauma when it came to my dad telling me that I was a bad decision maker and that I made terrible mistakes and I had messed up my life. So I believed I made terrible decisions, but that's not true. And I decided his position was totally wrong. I didn't mess up my life. I just didn't allow him to control me. I didn't allow his dominance to overtake me anymore or that to be my narrative. I make great decisions and so do you. And my intuition is spot on. It is strong and keen. So I, I, it's okay. I may make decisions. I may set boundaries so people don't have access to me. But that is for my well-being. It's for the protection of my family. And I'm entitled to do so. And so are you. So Reiki Womb Healing has allowed me to stand stronger, be more independent, and use discernment to sit well and sit strongly in my purpose, in my stances, for my protection, for my love, for my well-being. Not just for me, but my son and my husband. And my puppies. My peace is not for sale. Is yours? It shouldn't be. I sleep differently at night because of the work I've put in and now for the life that I'm living. I don't feel guilty if I don't call my mom every week. We have certain boundaries. I feel very blessed that we have a relationship after all of the things that we have gone through. But it doesn't have to look like Betty Crocker and she's sitting at my counter drinking coffee. Trust me, she doesn't want to be drinking coffee at my counter. But we speak and we speak about certain uh, topics. And we are grateful for that. And we find peace and joy in that kind of relationship. Because it has always been that way. So not everything has to be like Pinterest or like on social media. You get to choose. And you can have peace in that because this is your life. No one else's. This is your fertility journey. No one else's. All right. The next one is what are the long lasting benefits of Reiki womb healing? <laughs> that was an example. I think we just answered that question. Um, will Reiki womb healing guarantee me a baby? No, I can guarantee that 
if you put in the work and you're willing to change your mindset and let go of limiting beliefs, it will change your life because it's changed mine. And we have 97 Rikis to boot to date. So it does work. Um, however, there are other components you need to consider here. Um, are you ready to let go? Are you carving out time to heal? Are you making it a priority? What excuses are you making in life? There's other things like nutrition, medical treatment, like what is your fertility plan with your doctor? Let's have a bigger conversation inside of my DMs and we can go into like finding your blind spots. How will Reiki womb healing affect my relationship with myself? You're going to feel more connected. There's a feeling called wholeness. Um, and that's not feeling broken. It's feeling like you don't have to be anything else other than you are in this moment. And it's very powerful. You don't have to compete with others. This is like a blissful feeling that like in this moment, at this time, I'm the shit and I am amazing and I can do all of the things. So that is 100% what whole feels like. Um, and that was a benefit for me from doing womb healing after I released my birth trauma. I, the first time I ever felt that was I was on a ferry in Seattle going back to the airport. And I felt like this is what life is. This is perfect. This is what I was meant to do. This is what being whole feels like. Next question. Why have you chosen womb healing as your profession? Um, That's a great question. So in my life, I have suffered significant womb trauma physically and emotionally. And after seeing so many clients inside uh, the chiropractor's office when I was practicing in person, I noticed that everything that I was seeing went back to the womb, which means like their sense of self, their self-worth, uh, their emotional safety, how long did they feel their emotions? Were they shut down? Were they connected to their higher self? Um, were they having painful periods, a lack of a period? And a lot of the emotional and physical wounds were just present in the sacral plexus chakra. No matter if she was living the perfect life as a suburban mom with the perfect husband and feeling empty inside, or if she had um, a difficult relationship with her mother, um, had a hard time nurturing her inner child, or she was choosing the wrong partner um, because she had a lack of self-worth, because her dad wasn't present or didn't show um, much affection. Um, there were so many different reasons why, but it all went back to the womb. One day somebody coined me, you're the womb healer, and it kind of stuck. And then when I was writing my postpartum story, my birth story, my fertility story, it, I saw the pattern. It was very much how I conceived. I conceived with Reiki in the beginning. It served me through my birth, my pregnancy, and my postpartum. And I, in my postpartum, it's when I realized that all the things that, that were unhealed, they were erupting like a volcano causing me more anxiety. And then I noticed the pattern is that the things that go unhealed um, will erupt when we are the most vulnerable, when we're becoming mothers, when we are going through our fertility cycles, when we're going through our pregnancies and our birth and our postpartum, the unhealed childhood trauma, the unhealed past lovers or relationships the miscarriages, the feelings of unworthiness or feeling um, inadequate, they're all going to come up, especially in postpartum. And that's where I decided the more that we can heal up front, the easier fertility, pregnancy, birth, postpartum will be. And it doesn't mean that life won't happen. It won't eliminate the complications, but it can lessen them and lessen the likelihood. And there's just less thorns to get in our way. So that's why I became a Reiki womb healer. I felt like women needed to know how powerful Reiki was and they needed to know that it was an option because it's literally what saved my life in postpartum. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have been able to overcome all the things I have. It was not for 
this healing energy. It is what kept me grounded and functioning during my postpartum when I was so sleep deprived and I felt like the world was against me and I wasn't breastfeeding very well. And I was so scared something was going to happen to him or someone was going to take him away um, because I had irrational postpartum anxiety. And, I, you know, life was hard. The nights were long and the days were long, but the nights were longer. And I just never can seem to have get enough water and enough food. And Reiki just made me feel like today is going to be okay. Today is going to be okay. And I can do today. And I think that that's something. And then as time went on, I learned that I can get stronger, that I could handle it. I got more confident. And then I overcame the big stuff. And like, why am I feeling this way? Why is this still coming up for me? Why is life like this? Why can't I get through this? And then Reiki just removed it. Like, what is this so, like the core issue here? And that's why I became a Reiki womb healer, is so the women know, can know like when's when's the first time that someone made you feel this way? Let's let's cut that out to the rest of these other symptoms that are stemming from this one wound can be eliminated, and then you can go on, on living a higher vibrational, happier life. And that's why. I I do everything I do. Next question. Uh, how can Reiki help balance my reproductive system? So the more that you heal um, and we look inside your Reiki womb or your womb, your energetic womb, I can see where there might be stagnant energy. There might be blockages of energy or energy that's attaching to different organs. And we can remove that um, energetically in a Reiki session. And that will allow your physical body to relax. And then it will, the more that we can get out of the way of the physical body and give it Reiki, which is the life force energy that you need to be alive, the more that we can feed the body, the more it will heal itself naturally and work itself out. It also works with anything you're doing. So if you have insulin resistance or, and you're taking like metformin or anything like that, uh, anything that you're doing with your doctor the Reiki is going to support that. And also we can set the intention, say we have X, Y, Z, Reiki go to where it is to heal the root of this. How many Reiki sessions um, might I need to see results? Well, that can vary depending on the person. Also, there's not a guaranteed outcome. Reiki does what it does. And that is we can't control how deep or how much a person's willing to heal in one Reiki session. It could be one session. It could be 10. It could be three. Uh, just depends on also when is Reiki, um, when is baby ready to come? That is probably like more than half of it is we can like, when is their soul ready to transcend? Can Reiki help alleviate menstruation um, pain and discomfort? It can. Um, also is that it can accentuate it too. <laughs> Meaning like if you are working on your father wound or your mother wound and you purge a lot of energetic um, in a lot of energy and emotions, your next period could be heavier. But if you're having chronic pain, we can we, we can work on those and finding out what those triggers are and de-triggering you so that those pains are less. My periods are now pain free. Um, so because of all the work I've done. So it is quite possible to eliminate pain. What specific specific techniques you use in Reiki womb healing session. Hand placements, if the person's attuned. Um, I will also, with Reiki, we can do um, removal of actual blockages. So that's what we all do. A lot also with our programs is giving people attunements and telling them how to move the energy out of them when the energy, when the emotions come up and they arise in real time and sweeping those away and cutting cords. Will Reiki help me connect with with my feminine energy um, and intuition? Yes. So the more that you heal, the more that you're going to trust yourself and the more that you are going to, so to speak, come home to your body, the more you're going to be grounded in your body. And what it means is grounded is to collect all of your energy and put it back in your physical body. And the more that you listen to your inner voice and the more that you are conditioned to trust 
the decisions you make and trust the inner voice and understand the mechanics that your intuition and your inner voice can be trusted and they can be powerful. The first thing that pops into your head is your intuition. And the second thought that comes into your head is your ego. Your ego is meant to be limiting and it's meant to keep you safe and in a box. Intuition is going to lead you out of that box. It's going to expand you into your ego. It is very scary. Your egos might be to go down that dark alley. You know, it's meant to keep you safe. So as a small child, it's like, don't jump off the curb or go into traffic. Yeah, it's meant to keep you safe. But with Reiki, you are going to learn to rewrite what those beliefs are that are in the subconscious that are in your ego. So like, yes, I am powerful. Yes, I can go after that big job. Yes, I can trust the words that are coming out of my mouth. Yes, I can trust my gut. And the more that you provide evidence to yourself, if you need that, you can make a long list of all the great meditation, or all the intuition, all the intuitive decisions you made. You'll see, you'll be convinced because I bet you there's a long list. What can I expect to feel in, during a Reiki womb healing session? Uh, we covered that in the first part. Will Reiki help with conditions like endometriosis or PCOS? Yes. So with PCOS, it's the most common condition we actually see in the make a baby world um, because that also correlates with a father wound. That's the number one wound that we'll work on together. And basically with PCOS, that means the woman had to grow up way too fast. And she had to be the adult and she had to mature to handle things when she was still a kid. So, and that could be a lot of Hispanic households. That's very common. I'm Hispanic. So like if you are first generation here in this country, you might have had to answer, maybe Abuela was taking care of you and you had to go to the doctor's office and you had to translate, you know, her medication or you had to go to the pharmacy with her and you had to help pay the, like, understand what the bill was. And as soon as you could read and talk, you were also translating. Uh, that's a lot to handle as a little kid. Um, also, maybe there was an absent parent in your house, or maybe it was a single parent, or maybe a parent had passed away. There was a lot of times, or maybe you were the older child taking care of younger children, um, of your younger siblings. Um, that happens a lot. And that can happen what will happen is the masculine energy will then uh, will be affirmed you'll be validated good job you're so grown up you're so mature and then your mind is then saying wait a minute i'm getting rewarded i'm getting recognition i'm getting attention for overachieving overdoing overcompensating and leading with masculinity to get stuff done it can lead to hyper independence. And then what happens is then your masculine energy is taking over your womb and your feminine energy is becoming dormant and stagnant. And that's really hard to undo. And then that can affect once those emotional wounds have taken place, it can over time compound and manifest to a physical condition like PCOS or endometriosis. Um, so with that, we want to look at what are your beliefs around masculinity and femininity? Do you identify as a feminine person? Um, what do you believe in emotional safety? Do you allow yourself to feel all your emotions? How can we create that ritual within yourself first before then, before we go in and bring that into your relationships and examining your circle? We have to make yourself feel safe. Um, so that you can then start to stem out and like, okay, who is your safe circle and who is not? And then we look to eliminate or establish a healthy boundary with the people who are not safe so that we can keep your womb open. Your womb has to be open in order to conceive. And that's super important to know. So um, with BCOS, if um, we have to look to see if like those people who put you in charge, are they still in the same stance of keeping you in charge? Um, or can we take back our power and say, okay, 
everyone else is fine. I don't have to be the caregiver anymore. Because sometimes what happens is once you got that label, you're forever the caregiver of everyone in your family or whoever you were taking care of and the situations you were taking care of. And sometimes you never get to relinquish that role, that role or authority or responsibility. So it's important that we examine that. Okay. Um, can Reiki assist with postpartum healing and recovery? Yes. In postpartum, um, everything has been depleted. Your energy, you've, your body, your hormones, your mind, everything has gone into creating this human, birthing them, and now they're here. But now you're so tired. And sometimes with the sleep deprivation, you can feel not like yourself. So with Reiki and getting Reiki in, Reiki sessions in, that means we are restoring your energy to sometimes just average levels. We hope to thriving levels and just putting that energy back into you. But sometimes it can be really difficult to fit in time just for Reiki. That's why we have Reiki meditations on the go. It's really important to understand that any any bit of Reiki is better than no Reiki at all. And in postpartum, every postpartum is so different. But some women have a hard time adjusting to becoming a mom. Have a, maybe there's complications. Maybe there's, you know, we had a client who had a preterm labor. And she had preeclampsia. And then now she has heart issues and blood pressure issues um, post birth. And baby, he's a preemie, but he's thriving. He's fine. But she has blood pressure issues and heart issues now that we need, that she needs support in. So we're going to send Ricky to her heart. We're going to ground her so we can help lower her blood pressure, send her Ricky to her feet, to her root chakra to move the energy that's so high up in her upper chakras and move it out. So with that and allow her to transition into this postpartum with more support for her body. So this is going to be more of a physical issue before we get to the emotional issue, before we get to healing her birth trauma with her preterm baby, our premature baby. Are there any are there any lifestyle changes or practices I should incorporate alongside Reiki for optimal results with my womb healing? I would say dedicated time. It doesn't have to be the same time every single week, but carve out time to have a relationship with healing and know that you're going to do this. A lot of people will join the Make a Baby membership and then um, they'll be really good at coming at the call. Stay plugged in. Um, I think also there needs to be times for healings and then you need to take breaks from healing. I don't think you can heal all the time. That's total bull crap. You, you need breaks. It's really important to like know what season you're in um, and then carve out time. Just like you can't be in therapy all the time. You need breaks to go live too. How does Reiki overall support well-being and relaxation for the reproductive system? So. We want energy to flow freely between chakras and your energy system sits in the chakra system and the chakra system, the particular chakra that is responsible for reproductivity um, is our sacral plexus chakra. And that's where your uterus, your ovaries, all the things are. So I know that without a shadow of a doubt, if you are not conceiving, it's because your sacral plexus chakra is closed, blocked, and balanced. And it's because of various reasons and the, so that we have gone over. But we would want that to be open and flowing so you can conceive, so you can receive baby, whether it's the soul, the embryo transfer, or if you're doing a retrieval, whatever it is, we want the womb to be open and flowing so that you have the most optimal chances that the follicles are growing, that your period is the perfect length of time, that your lining is the right, correct thickness, that you are having balanced hormones, pain-free periods, um, a great connection to self, 
all of the things. Um, the more that you feel confident, the happier you are, the more connected you are to your higher self, the more sources of joy and you know what they are, the better, the less triggered you are, the more that you know that you are living in alignment and you are living a balanced life that has feminine and masculine energies balanced in your womb. Reiki supports all of that by removing the traumas and emotional blockages that are behind it, that are blocking you from achieving all of those outcomes. Remove the traumas, get the happier outcomes. But also with Reiki, once you learn Reiki, you're able to manage the worries that potentially could re-block your womb. You manage them in real time. Because you only feel your emotions as they come up for 90 seconds at a time. You have a choice to keep them or release them. But because society conditions us to stuff them and to stick them and not to feel them, um, we ended up stuffing them and our wombs become blocked. So we have to make sure that we are retraining our minds. What am I feeling? Is that emotion mine? Do I want to keep it or do I want to release it? And then we release it in real time. We can use Reiki to help you manage that in real time so you are not re-clogging the system, so to speak. Um, what self-care practices or exercises can I do at home to complement Reiki womb healing sessions? Cutting your cords, pink silk baths, I say two cups if you're trying to like neutralize your energy and let go of other people's energy or attachments to you. I don't like sage. I think it's a closed practice, so I don't sage my home. I use sound healing. I use um, also I'll Reiki my home. I'll pray. I'm a big prayer girl. I'll pray to Mother Earth, God, spirit babies, my Reiki guides. I will Reiki my home. Um, I like bells on all the doors. I also like crystals. So I will cleanse my space. I think having a clean space, a tidy space, a tidy, tidy home reduces anxiety. It's something I'm actively decluttering my home. And I notice like each room I go into, I feel so much better. Um, I think also finding sources of joy. The more joy that you have in your house, in your home, in your life, the better. And I believe that when you're trying to conceive, a lot of people stop living. And when you experience joy, it's different than happiness. It The residual effects last longer than just a minute of happiness. And when I, I describe joy as, um, imagine you go for breakfast at your favorite diner or breakfast place and the table across the room has a little roly poly baby and they giggle and they're sitting in their high chair and they laugh so hard. It's a full body contagious laugh, right? That's joy. It's a full body moment where you are overcome with emotion. You can't think of anything else. You're just feeling. That also is very grounding. And it's also going to raise your vibration. It's also going to be very healing. So think about that moment when you hear a baby. And I'm setting the stage here. Is because that's happened. And I remember the baby. I remember the restaurant. Because this actually happened to me. And it was like one of those like deja vu moments. You're like, I've lived this before. And um, actually the restaurant here in Omaha is called La Peep. It's our favorite breakfast place. And I, I can remember it. And I was with my husband. I was with my in-laws. I was with Ollie. And it makes me smile. And it, it brings me joy to just thinking about that memory. And that's what joy is. And it really changes your whole body chemistry. It changes your whole posture. It changes your expression on your face. And that's what I want you to experience more of. Where can you get more joy? What people can bring more joy in? What people take more joy out of your life? Because those are the people not to be around. Um, what conversations, what topics, what places, maybe it's experiences. There's a park downtown that we love. There's, I also love Greek food. So I've been cooking more. 
uh, get a hobby. Hobby is super healing. Dog training is my hobby. Um, there's been times of taking classes with, depending on what puppy, I have done classes with them. I have done um, agility. I've done nose work. I've done basic obedience. I've done all kinds of stuff. The nose work was kind of interesting because the lady also trains the dogs that sniff out bombs at the airport. So I took my little <laughs> King Charles, the middle one, and she was learning to smell different kinds of cheese. Anyway, see, and even that I brings me joy. So what brings you joy? Like in the, it's just not in the moment that you experience it. When you remember the thing that brought you joy or recall it and share the stories, it's going to give other people joy. And what, and that's super important because that comes from your, from your womb. Things that bring you joy are usually things you're passionate about, curious about, and that comes from your womb. Your womb, your sacral plexus chakra is responsible for your libido, creativity, emotional expression, emotional safety, feelings of worthiness, pleasure, power. So joy is pleasure. It's just not sexual. But, you know, it also is sexual pleasure too. And feeling confident enough to ask for maybe the things that you want in the bedroom. But for me, what are the non-sexual things that you can do in your life that will bring more joy? What are the things that you did as a child that's a great place to start that will allow the Reiki womb healing to even continue? Because when you are doing those things, you're healing your womb. And you're, if you do those things when you're upset, angry, bothered, you can move the negative energy through you and out of you. So thank you for being here. I want to know what you think of this episode. I want to know what you're going to find joy in. What are your activities that you're going to find joy in? Tell me. Send me a DM on Instagram at the Carolina Sutomayor. Until next time, friends, let the Reiki flow. Frustrated being told you are fine by your doctor, exhausted from negative pregnancy tests every month, wanting a deeper connection on your fertility journey with your spirit baby? The Make a Baby membership is exactly what you need. Using Reiki will help you connect to your spirit baby, heal the trapped emotions blocking fertility, and support you in our life-changing community. With over 90 Reiki babies, we invite you to try the Make a Baby membership for free. Check it out in the show notes. Let's get you pregnant.